Hey guys, Jesse and Clint here with Vertec, and today we're going to show you how to take a seismic test. Let's jump right into it. Okay guys, so today we're going to talk about how to properly take a seismic test using our HT version of equipment. This is very similar for the VTK version, but there are a few differences, so we'll have a different video if you're a VTK user. So, as you can see, I have CPT sound opened up. I'm ready to take a test. I have all of my equipment plugged in. And the first thing that I'm going to say when taking a seismic test, the way you have your equipment set up is very uh, crucial to how successful you're going to be. A few tips and tricks that you can do would be to mark the geophone on your cone to make sure that you have your geophones pointed towards your strike plate. We actually have a pro tip video on that and also to make sure that you have plenty of weight on either your seismic beam or your strike plate. Now some users may have one strike plate and some users might have two. If you have two strike plates they should be set up you know one on say the left side of your rig and one on the right side of your rig and if you have a seismic beam uh, it's going to have an uh, automated hammer in there that hits to the left and then hits to the right. So I'm going to show you how to take a seismic test with just one strike plate and then how to take one with two strike plates. So let's jump right into it. So I'm going to go ahead and take a baseline, start this test. Let me collect a little depth. Okay, so I have this kind of bench setup going here, so we're not actually on a truck or track rig or anything pushing right now. So I just took 0.65 meters of depth and now I'm going to click on activate seismic and so it's going to say waiting for trigger what that means is the seismic is all ready to go all you need to do is strike your strike plate or activate your automated seismic camera so I'm going to go ahead and hit my strike plate and now it's going to record that seismic data and put it up on my screen to preview. Okay, and now you can see we have two sound waves here. We have a red sound wave and a blue sound wave. And the difference between the red and the blue sound wave right now is what geophone you're using. So your cone uh, comes with two geophones unless you have requested us to set it up as one P wave and one S wave. In this case, this cone has two S wave geophones as do most of our cones. So the red wave would be SGO1 and the blue wave would be SGO2. So these are both shear wave geophones. And these geophones are oriented in our cone 90 degrees apart from each other. And so there's a good chance that one geophone is going to be pointed towards your strike plate better than the other, right? Which is why we kind of line that up in the beginning of our test. And if you don't, um, then it's kind of a gamble on which one's going to be better. But what we're looking for is what sound wave has the least amount of noise on it. And by noise, I mean you'd see like kind of a staticky line. One might be a little, uh, you know, have a little more amplification than the other. And you're going to want to pick whatever geophone looks best right from the beginning here. Or I should say whatever sound wave looks best using either geophone 1 or geophone 2. Um, being that we're doing a bench test right now, I have a CPT cone just laying on top of a table with all the equipment on the table as well. So this isn't a real uh, sound wave. This is what it would actually look like. Um, but to give you an idea, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose the blue wave here, which is Geophone 2. The reason why is it has a little more amplification. It looks like it has a little bit less noise on it. Um, they're both very similar, but I'm going to just say, in this case, a Geophone 2 is a bit better. So I would choose which geophone I want to use and then you'll see it makes the blue wave go away even though that's the one that we chose and it actually turns the blue wave into a red wave because now instead of the red wave mean, meaning geophone 1 and the blue wave meaning geophone 2 now the red wave means A strike which it says right here current test A and the blue wave means B strike. So now, forget what color the waves were before. We chose what wave we liked. 
now the waves mean something different uh, in terms of colors. So red wave means A strike, blue wave means B strike. And we're using the same geophone here throughout the entire test. So now I can click on add A strike because this is just a preview wave we have right now. And it's going to say waiting for trigger. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my strike plate again. It's going to collect the new data. And you'll notice you can see the old preview wave and then you can see the new wave. If I like this, I can hit accept. If I didn't like it, I could hit discard. So discard would just mean that wave goes away and you would hit add A strike again and just take a new wave. In fact, I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to hit discard. That goes away. You click add A strike. It brings us right back to where we just were. It's going to ask uh, for us to hit the strike plate again or activate your automated seism camera, whatever you have. So I hit my strike plate again, and sine wave looks pretty much identical. So I'm going to go ahead and hit accept this time. And now you'll see our new sound wave. And if I had a second strike plate set up, I would take a B strike. So for instance, let's, let's pretend I had a strike plate set up underneath, say, the left jack of my tracked rig, and then I had one set up underneath the right jack of my tracked rig and I just hit the left strike plate with the A strike. Now I'm going to hit add B strike and take a strike uh, on the right side. If I didn't and I just had one strike plate, I could just hit uh, save data and it will automatically bring us back to our main sounding screen saving the data that we've collected so far. In this case, let's pretend like we have two strike plates. So I'm going to hit add B strike. It's going to ask me to hit this strike plate again and I'm hitting the opposite side that I hit before on the A strike. Now we're collecting the new seismic data from that side and this should show up as a blue wave. So remember earlier when we were taking a preview, the red wave meant one geophone, the blue wave meant the other geophone. In this case, now the red wave means one strike plate, the blue wave means the other strike plate. So I'm gonna hit accept B strike and I'd have my two waves here. Now there are a few options over here. You can actually choose arrival times within CPT sound when you're recording the data. I don't suggest doing this. It's always best to choose your arrival times uh, when you're processing the complete seismic file because it's a bit easier to be consistent in choosing the same spot on each wave, which we'll have another video about that. But this does give you the option to do so. You can actually remove your strikes you can filter slash enhance, which is just going to clean up a bit of the noise and it's going to give the wave a bit more amplification. And then you can uh, scale your graph here if you want to change the scale. So in this case, I just took a left strike and a right strike, left being A, right being B, doesn't matter which way you do that, as long as you stay consistent every time. So always take your left strikes, for instance, as being an A and your right strikes being a B or vice versa. So now I'm going to hit save data and it's going to bring me back to our main sounding screen. So let's do another one. So I'm going to take some more depth and it's giving me a error sign because my cone is laying flat on the bench so my inclination is way off. So I'm going to activate seismic again and in this case you would strike whatever strike plate would be or whatever side of your seismic beam as well would be your A strike. So in this case it would be the left. So we're collecting the new seismic data and you can see the previous wave here, the kind of grayed out wave where it says previous test right here this is in gray, current test. You have A strike, which is red, B strike, which is B. So far we took an A strike and looks good. I'm going to hit add A strike and then hit my strike plate again and accept this. So we were looking at basically the preview before. Everything looks good. I'm going to accept it and let's say that looks good. Now I'm going to actually hit the right side. And I'm going to say that looks good. And hit accept. And again, if I only had one strike plate, I would only be taking all A strikes. So all day, you're going to take just A strikes. And we're using the same geophone throughout the entire test. It actually doesn't give you an option to use either geophone anyways. Because basically, once you are taking that preview wave in the beginning, and you choose down here where there was a red block and a blue block and one said geophone 1, geophone 2 
It's super important to know that you are using the same geophone throughout the entire test. Okay, so we need to save data. And that brings us back to the main sounding screen again. So there is another button here called Seismic Options. So if you click on this, this allows you to uh, make a few changes. So a minute ago, I just mentioned that we're using a certain geophone, right? Which is Geophone 2 because we, choose the blue, we chose the blue wave earlier. So this will give you the option to change which geophone you want. But like I said, you want to make sure you use the same geophone throughout the entire test. But if you need to take a preview again, for instance, you can click on this dual axis and take another preview. And then right here where it says recording interval, this is where you can change how long of a window it's going to record a sound wave for. The reason why you want to do this is because you don't want to be collecting too much data uh, because it's going to make a really large data file and it's going to take longer for you to take your test. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you collect all the data. So in this case, um, my cone is only three feet away from my strike plate. So it takes very little time for the sound to travel from my strike plate to my cone's geophone. So I have this set from zero to 100 milliseconds. And if you notice, when we were taking our seismic data, the sound wave showed up really early on the left-hand side of the screen. The deeper you get in the ground, the longer it's going to take for that sound wave to arrive, which means that you're going to see that sound wave start to move across the right-hand side of your screen. And once it gets close to the right-hand side, you can actually go so far in the ground that it will take longer than 100 milliseconds for that sound wave to arrive, and you'll actually miss all the data. So I've had folks send me seismic tests before and say, hey, Jesse, the data looked really good until I got to you know, 50, 50 or 60 feet, and then all of a sudden my data started looking really bad, and it just looks like a bunch of noise. And a lot of the reason for that uh, could be because they didn't open up this window to a larger recording interval. And what that did is it, it made it so their data just got clipped off the screen. So in that case, as I watch my data shift over to the right-hand side of the screen, you can actually go in here to Seismic Options, change this recording interval from, say, 100 milliseconds to 200 to 300, and all the way up to one second, um, which will allow you to record all the data. And the reason why I don't just set this to, say, 500 milliseconds and leave it there all the time, which would be you know more than good for a typical 100-plus foot push is because now I'm going to be recording five times the amount of data that I probably need to for the majority of the test. So this seismic options um, module lets you change this so you don't record too much data, but you are collecting all of the data. And then you can also choose over here if you want it to auto enhance and auto filter. And I have these clicked on. Some users want to choose to not auto enhance and not auto filter because you can actually enhance and filter when you're processing the entire seismic test later. Um, but it is nice if you're not collecting what looks to be a very prominent clean wave, you can choose to turn these on and it's not going to shift your data left or right and skew your data. All it's doing is filtering it and enhancing it so it's a bit easier uh, to look at and make sure that you have a nice clean wave and that you can properly choose an arrival time. So that's it. That's how you take a seismic test. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call, send us an email, or visit the website www.vertexcpt.com. We'll see you at the next video.